Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your treasures off you for a sum of money on the table today. That's not bad, just a little bit more. You're pushing your luck. I know. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, no way, have a gamble. Go to auction. You just might get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Bangor in North Wales. There's a great crowd of people. They've been here since early this morning. They have a decision to make. Do they walk away with cash in their pocket? Do they gamble and go to auction? But either way, they want the real deal. It's the first deal of the day, and sitting pretty as a picture on James Lake's table is a print by Graham Sutherland, a renowned 20th century British artist. You brought along a Sutherland print? Yes. Are you a collector? No, it was my grandfather's. Was it? He was yes. a collector? Yes. And yes. Did, he, did he just like modern stuff? Yes, he modern, did. Modern British? Yes. Mm. And why, have you, why are you selling the Sutherland? I'm selling it for my mum. She wants to do some home improvements. OK. So is the whole collection for sale, or am I only getting this one? Just this one. Oh, this is one, all right. Well, I'm glad you bought the Sutherland, because years ago I bought a Sutherland sketchbook. So if I manage to buy this, I'll have a whole collection. <laughs> um, do you know what, what the title is? A swan-like form. Because it looks slightly like a boat, doesn't it? Yes. With curious sort of creatures in yes. it. I think it dates from the 70s. Yes. Um, I think he died in about 1980. And he was very famous as a war artist. And he was a sort of surrealist, but not, but not quite. But very original. Um, I, think, I think that's really a nice thing. I like it. And it's an edition of 70, so yeah. not a huge number. Um, sure. But have you had it valued? Do you know, do you know what you want for it? Uh, my mum's given me an idea. An idea. Yeah. That's, that's good. So we've got something to work towards. Yes. Um, what would I like to give you? 51, 152. 250. Want a bit more? A bit more. Yeah. Not not that much more, I hope. Um, we'll see. <laughs> okay. 260 to 70. 280. A bit more. David's going to come now. He might say a bit less. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. 250 to 350 is the parameter of where our independents want to be. I think this is quite a commercial image, and of course, it's a limited edition, I presume, is it? Yes, yeah, it's an uh, edition of 70. Now, I think if you went to the sale room, I think you have something here which is unusual and collectible by a great artist. Ah, uh, is that it, James? Are you going there's, to try and tempt a little there's bit There's room more? for manoeuvre, David. <laughs> OK, you know exactly what the estimation is. If you can manoeuvre a little bit more, and if you could get round the £300, then I'm going to say that gives our dealer a chance to sell and go on and make a profit. And I don't think you would do a lot better in the sale room. You might get yourself another 50 quid more, but I'm not so sure. It's a gamble. So I'll put another 20 on, Sarah, which means you've got 300 Which is... Yes. All right, yes? Yeah, I'll yeah, take you're saying that. yes. Yeah. I don't have to make any excuses. No. OK, <laughs> thank great. That. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> thank Bye. you. I'm very pleased with it. I think it's a jolly nice thing, and I think it was a reasonable price. But I might have to keep it for a bit, because I like it. It's going in the collection. We'll see at the end of the programme, James, if you're true to your word. Next up, a little cruet set that has Mark Stevens very excited. Great novelty piece of silver plate. I love it. I want to buy this, and I'm going to try my hardest to own it. I don't want this to go to auction. This is going to be mine if I have my way. I want to go home with some money in my pocket. I've seen him looking at it. I know he likes it and I know he wants to buy it and we want to sell it. Well, watch out, Mark. Auctioneer Simon Bauer does have his eyes on the cruet set, as does the Duke. So you might have to compliment these condiments with a dollop of cash. You bought me in a very nice cruet. Yes. Now, what can you tell me about it? Um, it belongs to my other half. His mum gave it to him. She bought it in Hertfordshire about 35 years ago. Okay. 
and he used to do horse jumping, so that's why she gave it to him. Well, that kind of ties in superbly with the piece. Um, horse jumping, hunting, this is the career that you've got to have. That, yes. It's a very lovely piece. The one thing which, for me, is just a little bit upsetting is it's not silver. Right. But it is made by one of the best silver plate makers probably there's ever been, which is Elkington. Yes. I'm going to take this apart. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Good. If we lift this up here, yes. we can see the full Elkington plate mark yeah. with the name Elkington underneath. But I don't know if you notice one other mark. Maybe not. No. Well, if you turn it over, just there, can you see the numbers? Oh, yes, I okay. did notice those before. I don't know what they mean, though. Well, Elkington produced a catalogue. And those numbers were the numbers that you would give them to order the piece. Oh, right. So phone them up and say, I'd like item 4569, or send them a letter, whatever it would be, or go into the shop and ask them, and that's what you would get. Right. I mean, this is a lovely thing. I mean, we have... This is the pepper. And do you know how we know that's for salt? No. Because it has mercury gilding inside. The salt then won't corrode into the metal. Right. Now, what is unusual with this one, I haven't seen one with this, and I believe it's for cayenne pepper. So that's quite an unusual thing. I mean, normally you get what you call three-piece cruets, but this is four-piece, really, really unusual. Good condition, one slight bit of damage, which is obviously the hinge here, yep. but I really like it. One little bit of damage, but for me, I know I can deal with it. Simon, great looking item here. Um, Pity it's not silver, it's silver plate, but it's Elkington, mm -hmm. great factory. Um, but the content is, is quirky, smart, I would say upmarket. You have something for the hunting, shooting crowd here. You have the boots there, you have the cap, you have the horse's shoe, all nicely silver gilt lining for the salt or for the mustard. Mm. What do you reckon to the little single uh, piece there. Now, Mark said cayenne pepper. What do you think? Well, I'd have to go with that. Uh, I must admit, I've never never seen one as no. complete as that with all the spoons, but uh, that would make sense. Yeah. The independent valuers are saying two to three hundred. What do you think about it? I think lower of the two, around about the £200 mark myself, because of the damage, although it is a very commercial looking object. I think it's worth a little bit more. Now, Mark. He's got an eye for something different. Let's see what he puts on the table. OK, let's go into the pocket. Let's see what we've got. So, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 120, 140, 160, 180. 200 pounds, Louise. Well, I know you like it, and I know you've got a lot of money, so I'd like a bit more, please. <laughs> who told you that? <laughs> I can tell that you like it. You told me you did. Yeah, but you told you've got a lot of money. I've just seen it in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, but I've had to borrow that from the bank. <laughs> That's all right. You can pay it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know I'm going to hide that in the future, I think? Uh, 220 quid. Um, that's oh. getting more like it. Here comes David. Uh, well, just before you make a decision, let me tell you what I think about it. I'll tell you what, I just love it. I think what we've got here is something exceptional. If this was silver, I think it would be a lot of money. £220 is on the table. The question is, would you get more at auction? Well, in my opinion, I think you would get a bit more at auction, but there's still the commission. I'm going to say this man smells something good from 200 yards try and get 250 off him because i think in the sale room it will bring the 300. thank you 220 pounds on the table i'll put another 20 down 240 pounds louise maybe another 20. we can close the deal it's really tight louise mm. look i'll tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to take that away i'm going to put a red one down 250 quid on the table louise how does that sound to you? You've got a deal. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Louise pushed me absolutely to the last penny. She got what she wanted for it, but then I got the piece and I wanted that. 
I think I pushed him to the limit and I think we were both happy at the end of the day. We both got what we wanted. Now a classic timepiece has wound its way onto Debbie Circle's table. We've got a nine carat gold chain, which is very easy to weigh. The fob at 14 carat gold isn't quite so easy to weigh, but I can sort of guess its price. And I'll be offering, um, hopefully, a price that um, he's not going to be able to refuse. If I get a fair offer, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll bite your hand off. Watch out, Debbie. Lay out too much cash and you might lose a couple of fingers. So, Jerry, you brought something rather splendid in today. Tell me all about it. Yes, it's a half hunter watch which I inherited in 1990 uh, after my father died. I've been in the family uh, from the start as far as I'm aware. It was my grandfather's watch. Uh, he was born in 1864 and on the back is the, uh, the family coat of arms uh, from my father's side. Are you not emotionally attached to this not in particularly, any way? No, uh, my, my, my uncle, I remember, um, wore it uh, regularly. My father didn't and I don't think I've ever worn it. What we've got is a very nice half hunter opens up and it's very well hallmarked yes and the the albert yes. the double albert that's nine carat gold yes so what i've done is i've done a little bit of maths which isn't really my forte um and i'm going to put some money down and see if it makes jerry happy i'm easily pleased are you good yes, yes. okay 50 quid and you're a happy man oh <laughs> i wouldn't let's go that have far. a go let's <laughs> have a go at buying it so that's 100 I'm not even going to look up. It's 150. Still not looking up. 200. 300. 350. I've come up for air now, Jerry. <laughs> uh, I'll put you out of misery, shall I? Okay. Uh, by, by saying, I'm sure you could do better. <laughs> <laughs> a lot better. Uh, I'll be greedy and say yes, a lot better. A lot better. Yes. OK. Right, I'm going to have one more daring stab at it. You'll be daring. I'll be daring and go for. I couldn't wring a little bit more out of you. I'm going to say no. Oh. Much as I, I like you very much. I used to like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you... Oh, there we are. I'll pay for the bus fare home for yeah. a pension, I won't. How's that? Yes. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, it's been and a great pleasure to meet you and, uh, and do business with you. Fair dues to her, she made me a really fair deal, so what could I do but accept? <laughs> Probably pay top dollar, um, but I'm sure I'll be able to do something with it. It's a lovely thing to have, I've no regrets. Well, Debbie, you kept your hand, but will you lose your shirt when you sell it? We'll find out later. Also coming up, you don't have to say much in this game to get your point across. Um, what about £50? <laughs> oh. Dear, oh, oh dear. No. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from North Wales. Hello. Our next seller is hoping to get more than just buttons from dealer Janice Kehoe. I brought along a set of buttons and I'm hoping to get 40 plus. They're fantastic. Really interested in the Guinness buttons. They're different, they're unusual, and they're absolutely pristine. I'm really looking forward to trying to buy those. <laughs> now, will a gentle-looking Edith settle for £40, I wonder? And what have you brought for me today? I brought along a set of buttons which were given to me in 1962, when I went into the hotel trade. Yeah, and did you drink a lot of Guinness? Oh, gosh, no. No? no. I'm, I'm a non-drinker. Oh, my goodness. They look like they've just been kept in a box. They have, they yeah. have. Well, I'm glad you brought them in, because I think they're wonderful. Thank you. They are buttons, all with different characters on. The one I don't quite get is the kangaroo. I'm I not... don't get that. I don't understand where, where the kangaroo does that comes come in? into it. Maybe it gives you bounce, I don't know. But we've got not, we've got a full set of six on a card and we've got three others loose on here. Well, I'd better get some money out Thank and you. we'll see what we can do for you. 20, 40 pounds, how does that suit you? Oh dear. Oh, you're a hard woman. I know. Oh, you're a hard woman. No, 40 I'm pounds. Not. You know they're worth more. Um, what about £50? 
Oh, dear, oh, oh dear. No. 50 pounds. Okie doke. Right, if we're to take that 10 pounds away, if we go to 60 pounds on the table, Edith, what would you like to do? We've got David here to give us some advice. Well, I've come in, but I'm not so sure that Edith really needs me. I'm wondering if for the rest of the day, Edith, perhaps you can accompany me. I'd and love to. And help me do a few deals, because I, I think you're very capable on your own. What I can tell you is the independent valuers in the auction here, they're saying 40 to 60 pounds. Yeah. What do you think? Well, they're in mint condition. I think they're desirable. I think they are quite commercial. But you've got £60 on the table. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, it's safer from your point of view to get that in your purse. What are you going to do with all this money, by the way? I'm going on holiday. Holiday? What, Ibiza? No. Oh, where are you going to? Uh, we're going to Las Americas in... Uh, ah, OK, so you're going, into the, you're going to the Canary Islands? Yes. £60 on the table, Edith. I'm going to say, get that in your purse. That is going to buy a lot of Cuba Libris on your holiday. Thank you. You've heard what David's had to say. What would you like to do? I'll accept the £60. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you very much. I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Thank you so much. It was a really hard woman and she got £60 out of me for them. I wanted another, you know, a little bit more, so got me 60 pounds. Very good. Indeed it is, Edith. Enjoy your holidays. You probably wonder how we value all manner of different items. It's very simple. We have a team of independent valuers. They check and inspect every single item before it's placed in front of our dealers, and it's their independent valuation that you see coming up on your screen. Up next, five little piggies who come to market. Hi, Philip, I'm Mark. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Well, come on, tell me. Not wish pigs. They were with my late wives. Uh, she collected all sorts of porcelain. I'm starting to clear some of it out now and spend the money on the grandchildren. Right. Am I correct they were given away in the 1970s? That's it. The, the more money you saved, started with the baby. Yep. The more money you saved, you got up. The bigger ones you big, got. Bigger, and yeah. it gradually got bigger. So, yeah. I wouldn't have got past the little one, no, that's for certain. No, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure what they're worth. I mean, they're, they're unusual things, they're a bit quirky. Mm. And you can see why people would want to buy mm. them, because you've got the complete set, am I right here? Yeah? yeah, there is an uncle, but that was very rare, the uncle. The uncle was rare, yeah? Yeah, you get the mother and father and the children and the baby. Yeah. You have to have a, a really big saving account to get the uncle. But they may by Wade, so it's a good yeah. make. Yeah, know. I mean, Wade is kind of like really a household name, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's a very well-known factory. Yeah. But as to what they're worth, I'm going to be honest with you, Philip, I haven't got a clue. Well, I've looked on the net and uh, what they're going for. China, I break. Yeah. <laughs> as you can, I'm not very lucky with it. Yeah. So let's see what we've got. OK. So I'm going to put 20 there, and let's see what I've got in my pocket here. How about £25? No, no, no. no. I thought that was going to probably be the case, that I must hurts. say. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> How about another five? How about 30 quid, Philip? No. 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 You know, um, I. About twice that much, really. I know it's not a lot, yeah. Philip. I know it's only £30, but I really think you should consider possibly going to auction with this yeah. lot. And having said that, here comes David to give you some good advice. Well, there are people that collect these picks. Mm. You're not one of them. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm smiling, but these are collectible. 50, 70 quids within the auction seems to be the going rate. We need to get off to the auction and we need to look for a collector, a young person who perhaps will find these absolutely fabulous and hopefully we'll get 50 or 60 quid for them. Thank you, David. And that's absolutely sound advice. I couldn't agree with David more and I really hope that they make more than that for you. Yeah, take them to auction. Take them to auction. Yeah. Well, let's hope these pigs fly well. because I haven't seen many flying pigs. No. I really hope they do well for you. Okay. Thanks very much indeed, Philip. Thank Philippe. you very much. Thank you.
Well, the family of Pinky Pigs has landed at the auction, but will they fetch a perky price? You brought along something we've seen many times on Dickinson's Real Deal, um, a set of Wade's pig money boxes. You sat down with one of our dealers, Mark Stevens, but he only offered 30 quid. Right. What did you think about that offer? Oh, I thought they were worth a bit more than that. Well, I think the same. Mark, I think you were very much on the low side on this occasion. Normally, you're a very strong buyer. But 30 quid, not good enough. The estimation is 50 to 70 pounds, and there is a reserve of 50 quid. Now, how lucky do you feel with well, these pigs? So are you going to sell them, do you think? I hope so. <laughs> well, I have a feeling they're going to bring over the £50. Can pigs fly? Well, we're about to find out. They're coming up now. There we are. Nice, complete set there for you. And bid to me at £35 to start. On the set at 35 bid 40 45 at 45 bid. 45 bid 50 55 55 so that's past the reserve. 60 65 They are flying, those pigs. 70, 70 pound bid. I'm out now then, it's in the room at 70 pounds. 72, 72 bid. 75, 75 bid. Still interested in the room, 75 pounds. 75 pounds. And we ate quickly at 75 and away. OK, gavel has gone down at 75 pounds. We've got some commission to take off that. It's about 66 quid. So what's your first reaction? Satisfied? Yeah. Yeah, Philip says that'll do. They seem to fly here in the auction room. £75 was the real deal. Take home, 66 quid. Not a bad deal. Up next, not every deal can come up smelling of roses. The pig sty, we were clearing the mud and the dirt out and we came across this. And there it was, preserved in, in, in pig boots. Yes. 50. But is it always true that where there's muck, there's brass? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today we're in the historic city of Bangor, North Wales, where the locals have turned out in force with their antiques and valuables. Christine, hello. How do you now do? something is on James's table, but what exactly is it? I like this little thing. It's nice. What's, what's its history? Well, when we moved to Wales from Birmingham about 38 years ago. Yeah. We had a lot of clearing up to do in the house. Yeah. And in the pigsty, we were clearing the mud and the dirt out and we came across this. And there it was, preserved in, in, in pig poo. Yes, for yes. All those years. Absolutely. Yes. Do you know what it is? Well, I've been told that it's like um, the top of um, a snuff box exactly. or something. Yeah. It's the lid of a horn snuff box. It's still quite nicely stained from the, from the pig on the back. And you haven't cleaned it too much, which is terrific. No, I haven't cleaned it at all. If you put it in soap and water, it would have lost all that wonderful patination of, you know, 200 years. So I wonder, you know, if the pig man had his snuff one day and the pig died, dropped it, couldn't find it, and it's been there ever since. It could be. It's a nice story, isn't it? Very romantic. It is. It's very unusual, yeah. This is almost like sort of scrimshaw, which is what sailors used to do on whale's teeth, but this is done on horn. It was a common English thing to do, uh, horn beakers, horn snuff boxes, all that kind of thing. But I think this is lovely because you've got, a, I think, a schoolmaster sitting at his desk with lots of children looking at him. Lovely date, 1764, and I.W. or J.W. probably mm. was the man who made it. I think it's a great thing. And, and it's got a terrific story too, isn't it? Nice. Why are you parting with it? Well, since I found it, it's just been in a trinket box. S sitting around? Yes, yeah. and I hardly look at it, yeah. and I thought today it might be an opportunity yeah. To, uh, yeah. to do something. Did you grub it. around in the pigsty for the rest of the box? Well, we did have a look. Yeah. Um, but nothing there? No, my children as well were sort of looking around, but yeah. we couldn't find anything no, else. No. So, any idea about what it might be worth? Um, I've got an idea. You've got an idea? Yes. Okay. Um, I have been offered a certain Have amount. you already? So yes, I've got to top... about two or three years ago. This I've got was. to top that, have I? You have. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Let's start with 50, 100 pounds. Are you impressed? Uh, I'm impressed, yes. Does it beat the just, previous offer? Just uh, a little more might do it. We might do it? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell I like it, can't you? So 120. 
That's not bad, just a little bit more. And, oh, you're, you're, bit you're, pushing, more. you're pushing your luck. I know. <laughs> Keep my fingers right. crossed. You, know, you can see I like it. I'll give you another tenner. I'm getting to the end now. Mm-hmm. One thirty. Have we got a deal? Yes, we've got yes? a deal. Yes, yes. Good thank you very much. Thanks for bringing That's us along. Lovely. Great story. Yeah. It's such a nice thing. It's a really lovely bit of folk art, and I'm happy to have it. Where there's milk, there's brass. Time for a little sparkle in the den. I brought a diamond ring. I'm hoping to get about two to three hundred for it. The only thing against it is it's a bit 70s, 80s style. Well, if you've still got the shoulder pads, Janice, this might today? be the ring for you. And what have you brought for me? I brought a diamond ring that uh, it belonged to my mother. Do you not want to wear it? No, it doesn't fit my, uh, my fingers. I've got bits of fat fingers. Oh, no. How long did your mother have it for? Did you get it when it was new? Um, no, my, my gran gave it to my mother. Right, OK, well, let's have a look at the ring. It's, um, let me have a look. It's a very nice ring. What is it, about 1960, 1970, do you think it yes. was made? Yeah. It looks, the style looks very 70s. That's it. And it's 18 karat gold, mm -hmm. and it's got three diamonds on the front, and we call these baguette cut diamonds. Right. They're very pretty, but they were used a lot in 1970s jewellery. Yeah. Uh, very pretty, very decorative ring. Right, let's see what we can do for you. 1, 40, 60, 80, 1, 20, 40, 60, 180. I'd like a little bit more than that. A little that. bit more. Yeah. What about 190? Uh, David's going to come now and give us the benefit of his advice. Well, you know, I look at this and our independent valuers and the auctioneer, they've said two to three hundred pounds. Now, I know it's modern, it's 18 karat gold. When you think about it, they're diamonds, it's gold. It's no money, is it? I mean, there must be young couples watching the show, boyfriends thinking, blimey, if I could only get hold of one of those for that price, I'd be down on my knee now. So, I don't think there's a lot of money. 190 is on the table. 190 is on the table. Try and persuade Janice to give you a little bit more. It is a clean smart looking yeah. ring. I've seen a lot of Edwardian ones which I don't like as much. Yeah. That's a nice little ring. Right, that's told me. Let's see, we've, so we've got 190 on the table. If I take that 10 back, make that up to 200, and then if we go 240. Oh, if you put one of those brown 10. Go on then. Put the brown one there. 250. Do we have a deal now? Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Hayley. Coming up. A tea set has the Duke auditioning for Downton Abbey. In fact, I think my butler, I can see it being brought in on a tray. Tea? <laughs> um, but can Debbie offer up a classy deal? So that's a thousand pounds. No, thank you, but it? it wouldn't cut it. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from North Wales. It's the final deal of the day and Jane's brought in a 1930s silver service. It's certainly Debbie's cup of tea. It's a very exciting item that's just come in. It weighs an absolute tonne. Um, it's worth an awful lot in silver alone. Um, I will be trying to, uh, to buy it. It depends on how realistic Again, the seller wishes to be with the price. Well, let's find out, Debbie. He brought this splendid deco-style uh, tea and coffee set. Tell me all about it. Um, it's been in my husband's family, and I thought it belonged to my husband. Yeah. And I've decided that I will sell it for various reasons. Well, it's amazing. Um, it's got a fantastic style. Um, it's, it's terribly deco in appearance. The, these uh, lovely ivory handles, the shapes of them are so deco, they couldn't be any other period. Although they are slightly later than you would have thought, looking at the hallmark. The other interesting thing is that these two are the same year, mm. and these ones are slightly earlier and slightly later. So it's interesting, and I think what's probably happened is somebody has collected the service, really enjoyed it, 
bought it when they could afford it and gone back to the same retailer and added a little bit more. So you, they, I'm really happy that they all belong together, although the hallmarks are um, slightly different years. I'm going to make you an offer. Um, you know as well as I do that um, in scrap alone at the moment, it's worth a lot of money. So the price that I'm going to put on the table, Jane, will be one that's safe for me as a dealer so that I don't lose out should I not be able to sell it. That's where I'm coming from. So I'm going to count out a thousand. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 50, a thousand pounds. So we won't mess around because, you know, it's pointless. And then it's just a question of how much more I'm going to dare to go in the current market. So 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. That's, that's £1,500. A room with a view. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. I can see young people who don't want to clean silver, who don't want to buy silver buying this. I can see this in a very smart, young, trendy person's home. Someone like yourself, Debbie. <laughs> uh, it's just great. Produced just before 1947. Just gets in with the CITES Treaty on the ivory handles. It is just very, very smart. There is £1,660 worth of scrap silver. It's never going to be scrapped. It's going to be adored, used. In fact, I think my butler I can see it being brought in on a tray of tea. <laughs> I think it's just a super thing. So, the estimate is 1,700 to 2,000 pounds. Yes. And so I'm going to say, too little, worth a gamble. You're looking for real players to come out and say, yeah, I'm going to own that. It's a great lot. And I think hopefully somebody will come to the sale and say, I'm not going home without it. Thank you, David. Right. I'll put some more money down, see if I can tempt you. So we've got 1,500 there. 1,600 and I'm out. No more messing. That 1,600 is my final okay. bid. OK, thank you for the offer, but... It would be a tragedy. No. A tragedy to let it go for that. <laughs> 1660 is the value of the metal alone. And it is just smart, smart, smart. Somebody will buy that, either a private buyer or a dealer will buy it, and they will put it into their showroom and they will ask two and a half thousand or more, and somebody will pay it. Thank you. So that's after that advice, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You're going to take it to auction? Yes. I, if I put one more 50 down, 60, uh, no, I, no, I'm thank you, but it? it wouldn't cut it. That's fine. Thanks, okay. James. Okay, thank you very Good much luck. indeed. Nice auction. meeting you. It was lovely. I thought the offer was good. I'm sad it was rejected, and I wish her all the best at auction. It all happened so very quickly, but I feel I've made the right choice. I am hoping to get 1,800 to 2,000, and maybe, with a bit of luck, even more. Well, now it's crunch time because the tea set is about to go under the hammer. Will she get it? Now, the five-piece silver uh, tea and coffee service that you brought along, Art Deco with ivory handles, where did it come from? Um, it was my husband's mother, so it was in his family, yes. Okay. You sat down with Debbie, one of our dealers. She eventually put down £1,600. Yes. In precious metal alone, it's 1660 quid. Terrific value for money. You turned down the £1,600, which I think was very wise. The reserve is £1,700. Let's see what happens. It is sensational. And bid to me at £1,400 to start. At one... Starts at £1,400, which is a low offer. £1,500, £1,550, £1,600, £1,650, £1,700, £1,750. 1800. That's better. At 1800, 1850, 1900. Still no money, in my opinion. It's in the room at 1950. At 1950, I'm in. Who's for the 2000? At 1950. 2000. At 2000, bid. Just in time, 2000 pounds. 21. 2150. 2002. 2250. 2003. 2350. Wonderful. 24. 2450. 
£2,450 and bid, and it's on the market mine at £2,450. £2,450, it's well worth it. £2,450 and sold. I'm so pleased. £2,450. Good advice is good advice. Well, I, I'd like to think it's good advice. You know, we often, or I often, try and send someone to the sale if I think they can do better. So there is commission to be taken off the £2,450. Were you pleased with the overall hammer price? Yes, I, I was. Actually. Satisfied with that? I was hoping that. it would go to two or a bit yeah. more, so yes. OK, so you're going home now with £2,150. £56, which is quite a bit different than the £1,600 that you were offered. Yeah, big difference. It is a big difference. I have to tell you, it's one of the most sensational pieces of silver of this period I've seen in many years. Happy? Yeah, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank what are you going to do with the money? Have you thought about it? Oh, yes. It's, I'm selling it because I want to get the flat roof. It's leaking and I need to get it fixed. OK. Yes, thank you. Sounds pretty good to me. The flat roof is leaking. We need a few quid to repair it. 2,450 taking home 2,156 pounds. Real deal, but what a great lot. Indeed it was, David. Jane stuck to her guns and it paid off handsomely. Have our <laughs> dealers been rewarded for their efforts, I wonder? Mark only bought one thing today. I know you like it and I know you've got a lot of money, so I'd like a bit more, please. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> But for now, Mark's got £250 less money because he hasn't been able to sell it yet. Thanks so much. Debbie also me. only bought one thing. I'm sure you could do better. A lot better. I'll be greedy and say yes, a lot better. She scrapped the gold chain for £180 but gave the watch to her son William for his 21st birthday. Lovely present, but no profit. Janice hasn't yet sold the diamond ring. The only thing against it is it's a bit 70s, 80s style. She might have to wait till it comes back in fashion before she gets a sale. She did, however, adore the buttons. They're different, they're unusual, and they're absolutely pristine. And she's now having a special waistcoat made just so she can wear them. Tray chic, Janice, but again, no profit. Oh dear. The trend continues with James. It's going in the collection. True to his word, the Graham Sutherland print now hangs in James's kitchen. Thank you very much. But saving the best till last, James finally rescues our dealer's reputations with the horn lid. And there it was, preserved in, in, in pig poo. Yes, for yes. For all those years. He eventually sold it to a folk art collector for £250. Well, there's not this brass. You're right there, James. Well done. I'm rather relieved because we've had a really good result here in the sale room. Jane brought along a beautiful quality silver coffee and tea service. It brought £2,450, well deserved, and taking home £2,156 for the real deal. I am relieved, but I am delighted. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.